groundbreaking TV, a crackdown in the court, and hospitals are suing New Hampshire over Medicaid funding. Hello and welcome to Freaking TV. Today, the 1st of August 2011, I'm your anchor, Michelle Seven. Let's get right to the news. Keene's Mayor Dale Pregent will not be seeking a new term after four years in office. In a memo to city staff, he wrote, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time as a public servant for the citizens of this fine city, but the time has come for me to step aside and encourage the election of a new mayor. And Judge Arnold has cracked down on hats in the courtroom. This past week at a hearing in Cheshire Superior Court, Judge Arnold threatened arrest for anyone in the gallery wearing a hat. Here's a video of that event. Right now, <clears throat> immediately. I, I appreciate that you are trying to make a statement and you want to wear your hats, but, I'm, but in the courtroom, hats are not allowed. You may disagree with that. I'm not going to argue with you about it, but they're coming off or you can leave. That's a law. Do you want to take it off or are you going to leave? I don't have a hat on. I was wondering if it was <laughs> a law. Fine. Are they coming <clears throat> off, sir? May, may I? No, you can't. Are they coming off? I, I just... Then, Find them in contempt law. It's happening today. What is it tomorrow? Why? <clears throat> Why is there a ban? I'm not. I'm not going to jail for that again right now. Ten hospitals sue New Hampshire over Medicaid funding from Normal Love at the Associated Press. Ten hospitals sued the state of New Hampshire in federal court Monday, claiming inadequate reimbursement is jeopardizing the poor's access to health care. Medicaid is the state and federal health care program for the poor. Hospitals suing the state include Dartmouth-Hitchcock and Cheshire Medical Center. In the state budget that took effect July 1st, the state is taxing hospitals 5.5% on patient revenues. Reducing payments for caring for the poor. In the past, the state taxed hospitals to gain matching Medicaid funds, then returning the tax. The hospitals effective, effectively lost no money after a federal challenge to this process. The state must now look at how many poor people the hospitals treat, rather than simply reimburse the taxed amount. The budget cuts $115 million over two years from a fund that makes payments for poor patients. The lawsuit filed in U.S. District Court claims the state is in violation of the Federal Medicare Act by providing insufficient payment to the hospitals and doctors. The lawsuit goes on to say that several hospitals are intending or considering the prospect of not accepting new Medicaid patients. Others are considering ending Medicaid contracts between their doctor and the state. The hospitals estimate they will be taxed $250 million over the two-year budget. For some discussion on this topic, we are joined by Lance Weber, Heike Corser, and special guest, Adamo Freeman. Hi. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so Medicare and <laughs> Medicaid, right? Well, that sounds like business as usual to me, war on the poor. Exactly. I think the uh, problems here isn't exactly the hospitals, but the uh, individuals who are attempting to pay. I mean, this is a direct result of service where your customer is only one person. Instead, millions of people here are going to be affected by the government dueling out the paychecks for them. And instead, they could just give their money, their tax money, right to the hospitals and not be taxed at all, in my opinion. I agree with that. I'd like to talk about the situation with hats in court a little bit. So, uh, Adamo, you were there in court that day, right? I was, yeah. Why don't you tell us briefly what happened? Well, Judge Arnold uh, basically came out and said, hey, uh, this is my courtroom and I'm going to run it how I want to. And, you know, I don't know what the big deal is. The hats don't ever disrupt anybody. No one's out of order. It's always the bailiffs or the robe man who takes this into account but, uh, and, and makes it an issue. So when he's asking people and threatening them with jail time, I mean, I think we really have to stop and ask ourselves, do we want the, you know, county jail, the police force, sheriff's department, to waste their time, energy, and resource for people wearing hats. I mean, this is a peaceful act. Uh, it's not bothering anybody. All kinds of things are worn into these uh, offices by numerous people that work there that are employed there. I mean, hats by police officers are, are commonly seen on their heads, so it's not a big deal. I, I wish it would be overlooked and the people would just say, hey, enough's enough. Now, do you know why he all of a sudden cracked down on this? Because in the past, I've been to that courtroom several times in support of my friends, and he's never said a word about the hats that were worn. Were you ever wearing a hat, Heike? I no, mean, they don't really look <coughs> good on me. Oh, I see. I mean, <laughs> I, I only bring that up because I know once upon a time it was considered rude for a woman not to wear a hat, and so 
you know, I don't know if there was some sort of a separation between yeah. males and females. Well, my, my point is, you know, um, district court, Judge Burke always has an issue with hats. He's jailed many people for that. But Judge Arnold has never said anything about that in his courtroom, and now all of a sudden, just that one day, he said, all right, cracking down. Well, no I explanation. Why, I also wonder why there's such a discrepancy. I mean, there are uh, several other courts I've been to in uh, New Hampton and uh, various areas in the Grafton area, Lebanon, where they have not, uh, judges have not said a word about the hats. Massachusetts, we had a two-day trial and several court dates down there. Judge never said a word about hats. Bailiffs asked, but they wouldn't make it an issue. They'd ask you to take it off. If you didn't, so be it. And nobody wasted any more time, energy, or, or thought on it after that. And I think that's how it should be, you know. To me, it's an article of clothing, and asking someone to remove an article of clothing is disrespectful, whether it's a hat or uh, your pants. I agree. What happened that day? Was anybody arrested in uh, Judge Arnold's courtroom? No, uh, I think there was three individuals wearing hats, and at one point, uh, I mean, the, the cops came out, the sheriffs came to arrest people, but they finally just took them off right before the force was used, and basically, you know, no one had time to sit in jail. I mean, you never know. He, was, he left uh, Jim Johnson, uh, another local here, from Winchester, he put him in jail for 13, 14 days uh, in segregation for not signing a form. So this guy doesn't mess around. And, you know, I, I'd rather see the people call up their office down at the uh, Superior Court here in town in Keene, New Hampshire, and let them know that they don't want Arnold wasting their money like that. Speaking of Jim Johnson, he was allowed to wear a bandana that day that everyone had the hats on and it was such a major issue, but they never said anything about his bandana. Well, it's funny, uh, women as well, like you mentioned, there was one time and I still actually think ladies are not asked to uh, remove their hats. I don't know if that's for fear of another lawsuit or not, uh, something, but. It's an interesting curiosity. Only yeah. time will tell. Yeah. <clears throat> in a new feature of Free Keen TV, Derek, our sound man, joined me in a man on the street segment. I set about learning what is on the minds of passerbys. We had a good time and heard some fun answers to my word association game. All right, here we go. Red. Apples. Up. Down. Day. Night. Iraq. Uh, <laughs> uh, rock and roll. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michelle Seven, and I'm with Free Keen TV here in, in uh, Cheshire. And um, I have this little game I like to play, and it's called Word Association. And would you be kind enough to uh, help me out and play the game with me today? I certainly will. Well, thank you. So, where did, what is your name, and where are you from? My name is Marilyn Shore, and I'm from New Braintree, Massachusetts. Well, welcome to New Hampshire. All right, so what we do is I say a word, and you just tell me the first word that comes to mind, um, and, and there are no right or wrong answers. Do you understand how to play the game? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, well, here we go then. Red. Blue. Up. Down. Day. Night. Iraq. 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 Afghanistan. <laughs> there we go. Live free or die. Oh, that's New Hampshire's motto. That's right, it is. Thank you. Well, I hope you have a really nice visit while you're here in New Hampshire and that Keen treats you well. And thank you once again for playing the game with me. Thank you, we enjoyed it. Have a nice day. I'm Jared. Jared, nice to see you. Melanie. Melanie, would you two mind playing my game with me? Um, I guess. <laughs> sure. Okay, right on. All right, here we go. I'm gonna say a word and you are going to give a one word answer and response, okay? Okay. Hot. Cold. Good. Bad. Wet. <laughs> Up. The sky. Live free or die. Die? Live? <laughs> oh, he's not from New Hampshire. Okay, if I were to say to you, live free or die. New Hampshire. My name is Aziza and I'm from New Jersey. Oh, live shit. free or die. New Hampshire. Right on. My name's Heather. I'm originally from Missouri, but we moved up here in last fall. All right, great. Red? Yellow. Up? Down. <laughs> Wet? Uh, girl next door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the war on terror. The war on terror. Obama? <laughs> Obama, that's interesting. Okay, taxes. Bush. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And Heather, you have a nice afternoon. 
Well, isn't that interesting that Obama is associated with the war on terror and that Bush is associated with taxes? Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so there are lots of people here in Keene that are roaming around, and they have grown up with the Live Free or Die motto. And interestingly enough, that they comment that they most closely associate it with the license plate that is stamped on it. And um, I do believe those license plates are made by prisoners in a state-funded institution. And if I'm not cor if I'm correct on this, I think that most of the criminals, so-called, that are in jail are in there for non-violent crimes. And that would include marijuana or, um, or tickets or, you know, bail fees, etc. So I think we need to revisit this idea of live free or die motto being stamped on uh, license plates. And I think we need to revisit whether or not there ought to be license plates and car registrations. Anyway, thank you. This is Michelle Seven for Free King TV. Have a nice day. As you can see, we have a good time. If you see us out and about, please introduce yourself and give us a chance to hear from you. Quite interesting. I, loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I often want to get out there and, and do something similar, so it was nice to see uh, Michelle taking the lead on that. That was good stuff. There were some great nice answers. <laughs> right. So, do you guys think were the answers uh, typical of what you expected, or up, down, left, right? That all went. How you it was kind of right? opposite, but yeah. Yeah. You would. What, you, what would you have you answered? Uh, live free or die? Would you be in New Hampshire? I would say New Hampshire. Yeah. Would you? I would say trying, die trying. Right, exactly. I'm like, giving it my shot, but <laughs> right. it is great to see. Right, so. I think that's a good point that she made about the prisoners making these license plates in, in New Hampshire state prisons. And probably, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me to see somebody in there serving time for a license plate scam, you know, or <laughs> s stealing tags or something like that, or selling fraudulent tags. And, and now he's making and live for your making, die yeah, license plates. <laughs> stamping them out, right? right. <laughs> I kind of wonder why the woman uh, associated Obama with terror. I mean, is it is it because of the, you know, constant fear mongering, or what would relate that uh, growth of the yeah, overseas that was, war? That was a pretty interesting uh, right. response that she gave. And then Bush's taxes, but that's kind of <laughs> well, that's obvious. Right, right, yeah. The uh, Iraq question was that was pretty good. Michelle did a pretty good job of crafting the questions on right. this one because. So these innocuous terms, and then all of a sudden you throw Iraq, and it really threw people for a loop. But yeah, Afghanistan. I like the yeah, I like the Afghanistan response. And the one silly answer that was pretty good, but all right. So uh, <coughs> let's see. We have the uh, court news we can go into. Yes, we have some court news. Thanks to Casey Farrar at the Keene Sentinel. It looks like seven people were uh, recently indicted or are currently on the court's docket for. A handful of charges. Five out of the seven are uh, in there for drug charges. And how many people listed the jail as their current address well, already? That's an interesting point. There are four of them in here who are listing their current address as the a some sort of correction facility within the state. So that goes to tell you that these people, you know, uh, victims, individuals who are being uh, harmed by the system or the war on drugs, are before they even get a chance to establish a new address, are being sent back to the place. Uh, they came from for the same incidents, you know, and it just goes to highlight what the uh, highlight what the war on drugs is doing to individuals' lives. How many of these were victimless crimes? Uh, all of those that we listed. I mean, I don't. There is not a single uh, report in this week's court documents that say uh, court listings that where I see of anyone having a victim. I know we do have the uh, tragic murder that happened last week, but that is also uh, could be related to the war on drugs. You know, if people were allowed to provide a good, a good and or service to individuals in the community, you wouldn't have this violence that comes associated uh, with the war on drugs or, or drug trade as it is now, uh, when people could do their business uh, freely and voluntarily in, in places, you know. I go to Starbucks, I, I think some of us have visited there, and they never front me my coffee or uh, do me wrong. So uh, whenever I go there and get my coffee, I pay. And uh, if, if I ever rip them off or they rip me off, <laughs> there's uh, disputes we, we had on the left before violence is needed because we all know it's best. God bless Starbucks for doing business in right? an honorable manner. In a peaceful <laughs> manner. Well, I mean, look at some of these guys. You have uh, 60, 21, 53. I mean, it's not a young person's right. uh, a problem. I mean, this is a society problem, you know? I mean, what would you think of some of the solutions would be, Heike, to the crowding in the jail and the war on drugs? 
I don't think there should be overcrowding in the jail because if there is no victim to anything, then there should be no crime. So, I mean, if someone wants to smoke some pot, so be it. Your they answer shouldn't... is not to just build more jails? No, absolutely not. <laughs> more housing? You know me better What would that. you like to see, like, some of the, what do you think some of the leaders out there of the uh, King government, the councilman and stuff, what steps do you think they could take? Um, start putting in for legalizing, at least start with marijuana. Or they could simply stop enforcing those laws uh, and focus hmm. on property crimes or crimes of violence. Or maybe yes. some good ideas like, uh, you know, budgets. They could start hammering down some budgets and these would, you know, through peaceful measures and uh, financial uh, ways allow individuals to, you know, the police would have a scale back budget. They wouldn't be able to go after these uh, Peaceful offender. But I don't know. They I mean, do, the, do the people in King, do they do they want lower taxes? I mean, I kind of get the impression that people around here demand high levels of taxation. Oh, this would lower taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the taxes in Keene are just really through the roof. Well, that's and that's another good selling point, right? I, and I just figured that was a result of market pressure. You know that the people here in Keene demand these high taxes <laughs> because Maybe they, they just they feel I mean, like they've got too I mean, much. Surrounding towns are a lot <laughs> lower than. Right. Yeah, naturally, I'm speaking tongue-in-cheek. Maybe, in cheek, but. maybe uh, there should be a story coming up here in the next couple of weeks about the jail and how much they spend. I mean, what is it, about $20,000 a year to house an inmate at the... Uh, oh, it's at least that much. I would yeah. love to do some research on that. You know, and yeah. so that's what we're looking at. We got seven of them in the uh, Keen paper this week. I mean, that some of these guys are looking at five to ten years hard time and at 30,000 a year probably with some benefits or if they get some you know dental work whatever done while they're in there uh you know we're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars you know and who's paying for it you know we are the taxpayer right it's definitely well, let's take a break from this and um, talk about heika's thank uh, you. pitch um i wanted to talk a little bit about my friend becca who works at yankee lanes she, um a few weeks ago she was in a single car crash on our way to work in the morning. For some reason, our car went off the road. She crashed into a tree. Um, she's home now, but she's in very rough shape. Um, and the bowling alley on Sunday, the 7th, from noon to 3, is doing a fundraiser for her. And um, basically what they're doing, they're doing free bowling, but donations are expected. Um, let's see, they're doing a Chinese auction. And from what I gather, a Chinese auction is they have a bunch of stuff, they have about 50 things, and the big ticket item is a kayak. A brand new kayak was donated for this. And you buy tickets and you put it in a little cup and then they draw your thing, or your ticket, and... See who wins. Yeah, that's great. I've I seen that they had, uh, uh, f like you said, the raffle and stuff, but also an anonymous donor is gonna match the first $500 right. as well, and it's... The first $500 that they raise, right. um, an, an anonymous donor right. is going to match that. So right there, that would be at least $1,000, and this will go... Uh, towards Becca's medical bills and whatnot. I mean, she, she's obviously this, not working. Where is it happening? Um, at Yankee Lanes on uh, August seventh, this coming Sunday. Yep. Yep. From noon, noon to, to three, 3 p.m. Yep. And there'll also be um, just prizes for making donations, and then there's going to also be a little bake sale within the bowling alley. So a lot of um, community members, a lot of um, and community businesses, local businesses, even even the corporate businesses like. Target and Walmart and McDonald's has, have even donated um, items and gift cards and stuff for this. And this is yet another perfect example that uh, ties into the first story of the night with the Medicare and the poor being right. affected by the cuts. You know, I the mean, government you don't even has. Have to be poor. She's a college, or she just graduated well, I mean, college. Right, communities helping one another here, right. but instead people are looking at the government to provide it in this Medicare industry. Let the every individual, poor or not, keep their money and decide themselves. I bet you the poor wouldn't be as poor if they got 40% of their money back and freedom to choose how to spend their money. But right. it's great to see things like this in the community happen. You know, I come from a small town, Wisconsin, and a lot of folks always came out for that. But yeah. that's something that's impressed and me here in Keene is folks really turn out to help one another. Well, I guess um, she's on the road to recovery, but um, to the point where she will be at this fundraiser for yeah. herself. So that, right. that will be exciting to see her and urge her to keep up with the physical therapy and speed yep. of recovery so head on down the yankee lanes this sunday noon to three uh bowling all the proceeds go over to uh help becca so head on down there and check it out but have a speedy recovery becca we wish you the best absolutely good luck becca <coughs> yep and if you guys have any stories for uh free king tv you know we'd like to hear about it so hit us up and uh let us know or, or if like the other folks said if you see us out in town uh, it'd be great to uh, stop the by email address for that is tv at freekeen.com 
for any tips or story suggestions. Has anybody else got anything that's going on this week? I'd like to talk about the uh, police extravaganza going on at Target. Or oh, no. Where is the this one police station what? I heard? There's is that a, the police station? What happened? It's a night out with the police where they're putting <laughs> up some demonstrations. It's going to be happening is, tomorrow. No way. This is being paid for with uh, private money from, from Target. Is that right? Yeah, so that's, okay. that's probably the only upside I see mm -hmm. really about mm -hmm. the situation. But so we're not paying for it. Yeah, private uh, businesses have put together for this. I just read about this actually the other day, and uh, some of the... Uh, uh, outdoor crew, I guess you'd call them for here at Free King TV, are going to attend it tomorrow, but um, the on-scene guys. So, so what is this So this entail? is happening uh, this tomorrow, is new to me. Tuesday, August 2nd? Yeah, from 5.30 to 8.30, head on down to the uh, King Police Department. They'll have a little fun thing for your children to bounce around and interacting with the cops. But I, I'm going down there to kind of let people know about the other side of the coin. You know, King Police have, you know, used force in other occasions, and... I'm not sure they're the exact. Well, what do they hope to accomplish with this? Like making children not scared of them or something? Yeah, the, in the paper said that their, their goal is to interact with folks who don't interact with police as often. So, you know, I don't know. I see it as a pitch to be we're the good guys. But again, you know, mm -hmm. I do think police officers mean well and they want to do good in the community. But we just need to change the way policing is funded. Police officers are basically our employers or our employees, excuse me. Um, you know, they're there to protect and to serve us. And that's that. We're not. They're, they're, not our, they're, they're not being servants, paid for yeah, this at all right servants. now. They're not our. They're not our friends. They're not. Oh yeah, let's let's go hang out. They're public servants no, who exactly. have the authority to. Well, arrest, I'd have some, I'd, I'd, I would personally love to hang out with any of them. They want to hang out and get a cup of coffee and talk about anything. But uh, I just not think I. I think putting on the image of that we're here to protect you and we're safe and you can always come and trust a police officer isn't the right thing to do with your children because police officers just like any other stranger can do bad or harm to one another. Well, <clears throat> my kids are certainly being uh, brought up to realize that police officers are extremely dangerous. So I would even go as far as say extremely we won't be dangerous, at the bouncy, but we won't be at the bouncy park. I just think it's a good idea for parents not to give their children this false sense of security that these guys are can be trusted at all times 100%, just as you want anybody else, and to judge and uh, learn for yourselves for your own experiences. All right. Thanks. And uh, I guess we're going back to Michelle now for... Uh, uh, a little more truth in TV. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> or Patricia will end up going to state prison. You had to make an example of me. It's hard to keep hopeful. I'm Rita Richards. I'm Patricia's mother. You have a letter that you'd like to read? Yes. This is all has been a horrible nightmare. There appears to be no awake from. Patricia did break the law, but she didn't commute commit a huge crime. Putting her in jail would do her or her family no good whatsoever. All this has been the worst thing I have ever been through, and the worst is yet to come. I feel I might not make it to get to the end of the three years with all my medical problems. And sure, Patricia's father with his cancer won't make it. Trisha should be able to be out of jail and be near her family. I was a correctional officer for 15 years. I've been through some of the justice system, but this is one that holds no consideration for anyone. What was the judge's response to these letters? I don't even know whether he read them. Uh, tell us about some of those letters. Who wrote letters? What did they say? How good Patricia has been. Never had did any crime. And the family, how much we loved her and how she's needed and what a good nurse she is. So do you consider what uh, Patricia did to be a bad thing? No, not what she was doing. She's only growing it for herself anyways. Now, uh, in order for there to be a crime, there needs to be a victim, right? And do you know of anybody that uh, your daughter has uh, victimized? No. And so why do you think that the, uh, the state of New Hampshire is uh, going to put her in a cage for years? She, uh, she broke the law. I don't know. But one thing we're trying to figure out is why is there that law? Why can't she grow the plants and why can't she consume those plants? Because it's illegal, but, I mean... Right, but at the root of it, why is it illegal? I don't know. 
uh, when you were working in corrections for 15 years, some of the people in the cages, were they there for uh, drug crimes like this uh, that never hurt anybody? Yes. How does that make you feel? Well, confused. You're going to make a choice between alcohol and marijuana. I'd rather have you make the choice of marijuana. What do you think about the state of New Hampshire selling liquor, encouraging its consumption, and then caging people like your daughter for uh, consuming marijuana? I don't, th I don't think that New Hampshire or any state should have the right to make, sell alcohol. It does more damage to human beings than the marijuana. How does all this make you feel about uh, what they call the justice system? I've lost my faith. I, that, that judge, I, the other day, I completely lost all my faith. I don't want to lose it with God. I'm afraid now. I'm scared if a cop should drive in my driveway. It would frighten me. Think. They come here to get me for something. What kind of person is she? She's one of the best mothers. She's a lot better mother than I was. She's very helpful, very considerate, very compassionate, honest, good person. I didn't bring up a criminal. I brought up a good, good person. Someday I will need every flower seed to complete my collective growth. Well, I'm used to seeing the sun now rise. That gave me pause before a shallow dive. And now I surface on. Thank you for joining us this evening. As always, we welcome your thoughts, so write to us at tv at freekeen.com. We here at Freekeen TV wish you a good night and hope you turn in next week when we hope to have things a little bit more organized. Good night, Keen. No victim.